Yeah, yeah all right. Uh, sorry. Um, Madam Speaker, uh, first thing I want to do before uh, speaking about uh, our friend George is uh, to say that Steve Rose says to tell you happy birthday down from Auckland, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope they heard that. <laughs> you got the message, right? <laughs> Great. So, and let me join with the expressions of happy birthday to the Prime Minister. Um, I want to start off because this is entirely personal and uh, not so much about um, the public uh, George Smith that you've heard about, uh, because it may seem a rather unusual choice for me to be speaking about him. But I w I've said to younger politicians that uh, expression, this expression, uh, politics is a fortuitous business. And the main thing is actually just be present, because uh, most of it is luck. And so in the uh, fall of 1975, I was um, then the chair of the Centerville branch of the Progressive Liberal Party. And uh, this was my first convention. And uh, so uh, it was my task to read the annual report of the branch, which is, of course, one, usually one of the most boring exercises that you could ever go through. And nobody's in the room when this takes place. But on the morning that, uh, that I was reading this, uh, Muhammad Ali was coming to the convention. So I'm sitting there as chair, and I'm praying to myself. I'm saying, now, you know, if I get to speak after Ali, nobody's going to be in the room because he's gone. So I better be. And as it turned out, I was the last speaker before Ali appeared. So the room was full. All the ministers, everybody was there. And I gave this speech. And I remembered um, Pinling jumping up and ran up to me and said, boy, you're on your way. And after that, there was a procession of ministers led by Loftus Roger, who were claiming me as their <coughs> protege. And George Smith was one of those. And I ended up uh, with his brother, Philip, going around the country almost every weekend uh, up into, until and through the 1977 campaign. Um, and there is no substitute for that kind of hands-on experience with politicians who themselves are experienced. And it was open. Uh, there was no guile associated with it. Um, and uh, we had long journeys with his man, Rocker, going from, <laughs> from uh, and the roads, of course, in Exumbo were horrible in those days. So it, it took you it, an, almost an eternity to go from, uh, from Georgetown to, Ro to Roeville. Uh, but that was uh, with George. And then with Philip and his campaign, uh, in North Long Island, uh, um, at Rumkey and San Salvador, in the constituency there. And uh, so that was the beginning of a long and fruitful journey. And I had the occasion uh, to speak to Philip, his brother, to thank them, really, both of them, for uh, allowing that opportunity, because this would not have been possible this morning if it had not been for their openness to allow that experience to take place. And it is something which I try to copy in my own uh, public life with regard to politicians or people who are interested in public service. Um, so you've heard that uh, George Smith was the minister responsible for uh, agriculture and fisheries. And his portfolio also included local government and the responsibility for the family island regatta. So as a result of that, when the 25th anniversary of the regatta took place, the national regatta took place, he appointed me to the committee to, to memorialize and celebrate the 25th anniversary of the national regatta. I think in that year he actually changed the nomenclature from uh, Exuma Regatta to National Regatta, if I'm not mistaken, in that year. And uh, of course, 
I got the opportunity as a result of that, again, fortuitous, to meet Bobby Simonet, who for me was only a figure that I read about in the newspaper, uh, because he was one of the founders of the regatta back in the 1950s, um, and got the opportunity, again, to have an exchange with why they did some of the things they did, why the government acted in the way they did in some of those matters. So an interesting experience uh, also down to George. He was the, uh, one of the signatories of the document of independence. You've heard that, and we have left now Sir Orville Turnquest, Sir Arthur Folks, and uh, Honorable Philip Bethel. I think those are the only ones left. Loftus. And A. Loftus Roker, yes, of course. I've spoken to him as well. As a matter of fact, I called Loftus on the day that George died to say, well, you know, only you and, and uh, Philip Bethel and all the now left with uh, Arthur Folks. So, um, that, that too was an interesting experience. And I'm really, I know he was looking forward to this 50th anniversary celebration. I'm really sorry that he's not able to, to be here for the 50th anniversary. Uh, the Deputy Prime Minister referred to George's phenotype. Uh, and I want to go to that for a minute. Um, there's a poem, I think it's by Robert Frost, that says, uh, two roads in the wood. And I took the road, the one less traveled. And that has made all the difference. And I want to associate that with George Smith because uh, what Arthur Folks says is a telling point about our country and uh, those who may not recognize what our country was prior to 1967. If you want to have some idea of this, it's probably a good idea if you can get a hold of a book called Race and Politics in the Bahamas by Colin Hughes. And it outlines the history of the political struggle and this fault line of, polit of uh, or cleavage in our politics of race. W.E.B. Du Bois says uh, that uh, in the 20th century, the color line would be uh, the defining political uh, line. And so George was sitting at a table or at the bar in uh, what was then called Green Shutters. And a friend of ours, mutual friend of ours, Doc Sweeting, was cracking a joke with him. And he said, uh, you know, George, you know when you go over to Miami, you could pass over there, right? And George did not crack a smile. That was not funny for him at all because he identified as a black man. And, you know, in these days, in, in those days, that, as Arthur Folks was saying, that says something. And what defines you, I think, so much is that in when you are in difficult times, when you are in difficult times, not in the easy times, where you take your stand, where you take your stand. And to me, uh, Good advice. that's right. No matter, no matter what, yeah. what happened after, <laughs> no matter what happened after, no matter what was done, so on and so forth, the fact is he took that stand. And that defined, for me, who he was. And uh, if, again, if you want uh, some explanation of what this was like, Derek Burroughs, who is a friend of mine from Sunday School at the Gospel Hall, did a movie called Before the Trees Were Strange. I think you should. That's worth watching. It's, wor it's actually worth watching because it defines so much of how important an issue this was. Uh, and, and I guess in some senses it's still an issue, an important issue for us today. And we were at a meeting the other day. Uh, my colleague uh, Sean McQueenie was saying that, you know, we've never had any kind of national discussion on this issue of race in our politics, where it is, and how it defines itself. Because, of course, it's, there's a lot of embarrassment connected for some people with it. Uh, some people, it goes to their identity. Uh, not, not knowing that the one thing that, that I keep repeating from Martin Luther King is that the only thing 
the only thing that counts is the content of your character. All of this stuff, all this external stuff, has nothing at all to do with anything. The only thing is what kind of person you are. What kind of person you are. Are you honorable? Uh, do you support your family? Do you support the country? Do you serve God? Those are the important things. The phenotype, uh, unimportant. And um, when you read um, Colin Hughes's book about this issue, um, and you read Sean McQueenie's book, Breaching the Gate, about how important this all along in the history of our politics uh, was, uh, you'll see why I think it's important for us to put George Smith in the context of that struggle and where he stood uh, as a great Bahamian. He's a great Bahamian, uh, not a white one, not a black one, but Bahamian, and that supersedes. Uh, so he signed uh, documents. Uh, he's left us uh, in our 50th, almost in our 50th year. And uh, it's, it's really only left for me to say at this point my grateful thanks uh, for helping to launch uh, what has been for me uh, a wonderful career and one which, uh, a career in public service which I would recommend uh, to any Bahamian coming up. And I send him to God, bless him on his way, and thank him most sincerely. Thank you, Honorable Member.